folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor at Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of prophetic research ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. The first news article we have for today is Ahmadinejad calls for new world order. <sighs> Sorry, but it's getting kind of boring. Uh, seems like Ahmadinejad, every time he makes a speech, he says, New World Order, we're going to have a New World Order. Uh, I'm a 12er, we're going to bring up the Imam out of the well. Um, maybe this guy is going to be significant at some point. Um, but you keep saying the phrase, New World Order, New World Order, New World Order, New World Order all the time. And uh, pretty soon, nobody believes you. Unless you're really planning on bringing in a new world order. And uh, I want to sort of preface uh, what we're going to deal with in the rest of the broadcast. Uh, sort of along that line and, and maybe explain a little bit what a uh, or what the new world order is all about it all hinges upon bible prophecy and and anything you know about this ministry you know that uh with me um if it's not in the bible it doesn't exist and uh, i have not uh i have not dealt with certain things that have come across uh, my way people send me emails pastor mike look at this pastor mike take a look at that uh here's information on this i i won't deal with it Unless I can see it clearly in the Bible, and, and I don't want to list off all of the conspiracy theories um, that I won't deal with. It's not that I uh, refuse to believe them. It's not that I refuse anything about them. It's just that in time, God has to show me these things from the Bible. And I really want to encourage you. Uh, that's how you live your life. That's how you formulate your, your ideas and your opinions, um, is that... Yes, okay, we do research from what's going on in the world. We read websites where everybody has all these hypotheses uh, concerning uh, the Japanese earthquake. What really happened? Some say it was harp. Some say it was some other... And I will say, hopefully, you will never, ever, 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 ever hear me say on the Watchman broadcast, false flag. Okay, I, I won't use that term. Hopefully, I will never use that term. Um, it just seems like every little thing that happens, it's a false flag for something else. Oh, there, I used it. Uh, but anyway, uh, formulate your theories. What you see out in the world uh, must match what's in the Bible. This is one of the things that we like to do and we like to deal. We like to deal with conspiracy facts rather than just theory. I want to know rather than guess. And I want you to know, rather than just believe me or believe anybody else out there, I want you to know. So I want to, I want to preface some things uh, with a much studied, much uh, talked about chapter in the Bible, and that is Revelation uh, chapter 13. Here is sort of um, the, uh, and, and there's other places in the Bible that we could go to, and we will in this broadcast. But um, I want to preface this with uh, a study of just Revelation chapter 13, and just kind of reading over this, and then we'll launch into some of the other articles, a lot of which that you sent to me in the last few weeks, and thank you for that. Revelation 13, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now, the first thing I'd like for you to do is I would like to put, I would like for you to put your literal interpretation glasses on. Okay, um, God does use symbols, but those symbols are literal, and and He will explain the symbolism of them in the other pages of the Bible. That's very very important to know, um, so that you don't point to someone and say that's. I think he's the beast. I think he's the Antichrist. Uh, I think Obama is. I think Prince Charles is. I think uh, Lady Gaga uh, is the beast. I haven't heard that one, but it would be a good idea. Uh, but anyway, it literally is a beast, a, a spirit realm uh, beast, a, a, a part of the, um, the group of angels called cherubs. They have beast-like appearance and, and so on. So John is describing in a literal fashion what he's seeing happen here. Uh, this beast was cast into this pit at some point, probably as part of the angels that sinned, that committed folly. In Genesis chapter 6, uh, he said, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Literally, but also symbolically, the symbolism of the number 7, the number 10, the fact that their heads and so on, they mean something. And upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. Yes, they are symbolic 
but they are also literal. John is describing the exact appearance of this beast. Um, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seed and great authority. Do you believe in dragons? I do. I believe there's one great big gigantic, really mean, vicious, fire-breathing dragon. His name is the devil, Satan, Lucifer. That's, that's who this is. The dragon gave him his power and a seat and great authority. So we see the dragon giving this beast his power and his seat, which means his dominion and his authority. This is the new world order. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So I want you to get this concept that this beast is going to be powerful. In, if we were to go back to our all-seeing eye video, we know that the devil is trying to build a network of, of technology, a network, a network of watchers, a network of people, and government institutions, and commercial institutions that is monitoring and watching everything that is going on. The plan for total global dominion is advancing and it's advancing very rapidly and um, the people of the of the earth wonder at their beast by saying who is able to make war with him in other words he will be a nearly unstoppable unbeatable uh, presence on planet earth um, and I, I want to move on um, here to the latter part we see the idea of the false prophet um, we see in verse 15, he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in, 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 in their right hand or in their forehead. Right back behind where my finger is, right here, is my pineal gland. Okay, uh, that is the serpent, the kundalini rising up and being part of my, my inner consciousness, opening my third eye. Uh, and I think that mark in the forehead has everything to do with that. Um, and then verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So three things here. And here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of man. And his number is 603 score and 6. And then in Revelation 17. And I'm just kind of kind of giving you a heads up here. What I'm talking about. Um, the Bible says um, in uh, Revelation 17 verse 3. So he carried me away in the, wild, in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And so we see the woman who is Mystery Babylon. She is uh, Ashtaroth of the Old Testament, Diana of the New Testament. Um, she is the Queen of Heaven, uh, mentioned in the book of Jeremiah. She is, uh, she is Isis of the Egyptians. And I want you to remember that. She's the first.